You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life in Style with Sarah. On tonight's episode, we're talking about bread baking basics. My guest is Don Dickey. He has taught hundreds of bread baking classes in the greater Hartford area. He is the author of the book Bread Class Recipes, and he is here to give us a beginner's lesson on making bread. Welcome, Don. Thank you very much, Sarah. It's good to have you, and the bread already smells delicious. That was uh, this morning's work. Now we're going to try uh, a different recipe this afternoon. Right. So what are we making? Um, we're going to make a Bayer, a really simple Italian bread recipe. Okay. With the, all you really need to make bread are four ingredients. You need mm -hmm. flour, water, okay. yeast, and salt. Simple. And we're going to demonstrate the ability to make bread with four ingredients. And okay. it's actually amazing how many different kinds of bread you can make with just four with ingredients. Just those four In fact, ingredients there's a okay. book out there called Flour, Water, Yeast, and Salt. And that's all he does is the whole one inch book is all about how to make all these different breads cool. with four ingredients. So we're going to start out okay. with very simple ingredients. We're going to start out with, with two cups of warm water. Right. Um, and the water wants to be quite warm. Um, this water is actually going to be around 120 degrees. Okay. Um, we're going to add to that three cups of flour, okay. which I've pre-measured by weight. All right. And we're going to add to that a tablespoon of sugar. And the sugar is just simple uh, yeast food. Um, and we'll talk about why we'd want to feed the yeast, but it makes it nice and happy. Okay, and we're going so to pop we've mixed our flour, our sugar, and our water. And we're going to add the mixing paddle, okay. not the dough hook. Not the dough hook. To All the right, mixer. mixing paddle, not the dough hook. And we'll bring this up and mix these together. Okay. On a, a low speed. Because all we're doing now is mixing the initial ingredients. Okay. Um, we've got roughly, we've got all the liquid and all the sugar and okay. about half of the flour. Okay. And what we want to do is just mix yeah. these ingredients together and check the temperature. It kind of looks like paper mache paste in That's this form. That's <laughs> probably about what it should look like. And right? the temperature wants to be somewhere between 100 and 105. And it okay. looks like we are on 105 on the dot. Okay. So you're actually using a thermometer. Using a, a darkroom thermometer, which okay. is very accurate. Okay. It reads 0 to 140, so mid-scale is right on where we want All to right. be measuring. And now that we've got it at the right, right temperature, temperature. Okay. we can add our yeast. And this is instant yeast, and it dissolves right away. Okay. You just mix it right in. We're going to mix it right in. So gone are the days of putting it in the water and sugar first. Correct. Okay. That's, well, that's still required if you're using active dry yeast. Um, All right. They're, they're both still available. When you go to the store, it's important when you look for yeast, um, this is bread machine yeast. This is basically the same as what I have. Okay. Is, um, is the dry is the instant dry yeast. You can actually mix the bread machine yeast or the instant yeast that I use directly with the flour and then okay. you basically just add do the liquid the to thing. that. But what I'm trying to do is get it at the right temperature first so okay. that we have as fast a process as possible. Okay. Um, bear in mind that my book is designed to teach kid, uh, students mm -hmm. how to make bread in a classroom where we have two and a half hours. Okay. And it's, it's, so this is quick bread making. When you're doing it at right. home, it's, well, it's yeast, yeah, it's quick yeast bread quick making. Quick yeast bread making, right. Um, when you're making bread at home, you've got all afternoon, you don't really have to worry about the temperatures as much, but right. to be in and out of a classroom in two and a half hours with fully baked That's bread, the looking is like important. that, it, the okay. temperature is, is actually mission critical. Right. If it's too hot, it'll kill the yeast. If it's too cold, things just happen too slowly. So we're looking okay. for a temperature window of around 100 to 105. Okay. And then, so... What are we doing now? We're just right letting it now, sit? Right now, this is this step where we, we are letting it sit for just a few minutes okay. is called autolyse. It's a, okay. actually a French term, and it has to do with allowing the flour to become at equilibrium with the, with the liquid in the ingredient, in, right. in the recipe. Um, you ever made pancakes, and you mix together the pancake batter, and you 
you know, spoon some batter into your hot skillet, and the pancakes fall apart when you try right. to flip them. Or they have lumps of flour in them. Or yeah, well, most mm -hmm. of the biggest problem is that they, when you go to flip it, they tear, they fall right. apart, mm -hmm. and that was be, be immediately apparent if you made crepes because they're so delicate because right. they're thin. Um, that people think it's because they didn't have enough butter in the pan or they didn't have enough enough. Uh, uh -huh. The pan wasn't the right temperature right. and actually has nothing to do with either of those. It has everything to do with mixing the batter and letting it sit letting for... Letting it sit correct. so the flour is all absorbed So the flour, equally. when you mix sugar into water or if you mix salt into water, mm -hmm. it dissolves instantly. But when you mix flour into water, there's actually a time factor for it to actually to okay. absorb the liquid. So can, I, can we show people at home what this looks like? Sure. We can just pop this off. Just what that batter um, looks like. Let me just drop this down. Okay. And what we have here... So this is auto-leasing. This is auto-lease. <laughs> And if we let this sit for 15 minutes, okay. we begin to see Ooh, a foam. And I can feel it's quite warm on the bottom of the um, It's 105 degrees. Man, it's quite warm. Feels good, actually. <laughs> and we're going to let that sit so for just a couple of minutes. Yep, it's just like a pancake batter. I'm just making sure he gets sure. it. Sure. We get a good shot of that. Um, so it's like a pancake batter, and it does smell like paper mache paste. Yeah, the <laughs> yeast, isn't, yeah. yeast is just starting to come, yep. come to life. Yep. Okay. We'll talk briefly what's going on here um, while we're while we're while waiting. We're, waiting. Okay. we're just going to give this a few minutes to uh, to auto lease. And the the traditional auto lease involves um, mixing these two together and then adding the yeast later. But in bread class, because we're very time limited, we're actually we add the yeast at the beginning of auto lease instead of at okay. the end. And so. We're simultaneously accomplishing, accomplishing two tasks. All right. We're allowing the flour to come at, to an equilibrium with the liquid, mm -hmm. and we're giving the yeast a head start. Okay, so the so yeast is starting to come to life. The yeast has come to life. So when All you right. look at the yeast in this state, it's mm -hmm. obviously very so dormant. So for, for people who really don't know, yeast is a live, well, a dormant, it's a dormant live kind of culture. It's a dormant single-cell microorganism. Microorganism, it's, okay. It's technically part of the fungus family. It's a okay. fungi. fungi. And uh, there are like 1,500 different kinds of yeasts. This is the one that we use for it's bread. It's a yeast. specific okay. culture used for making bread. It's very similar to the one for making beer or wine okay. because you have the same process. It's fermentation. Okay. So beer is, in fact, liquid bread. Very similar ingredients, mm. same process, except you're not baking it. You're not letting it ferment it, over letting time. Ferment. Okay. So when you look at this, you can tell it's in a very dormant state. It's still there for a second. Okay. Yeah, it's very just small like little... Granules. Granules. And the, these are yep. actually smaller granules than the active dry that you may have been used to. Mm -hmm. um, that's why they call it instant because it dissolves so quickly. But it needs, it needs three things to come back to life. It needs warmth. Okay, it needs which is moist, the warm water. Which is warm water. It needs, it needs moisture, again with the, the warm water. water. And okay. it needs food. Which is the sugar. So it's got sugar right? and flour. So it, it likes, eats flour it too. It likes carbohydrates. Ah. It's just like us. We love carbohydrates <laughs> and it loves carbohydrates. So they're getting starch bloat right now, they're, sitting there. And they're the doing <laughs> exactly the same thing. And, and, you know, when we have carbs, the first thing, you know, what, what, this thing is doing the exact same thing we do. When we digest food, we produce carbon dioxide gas, which mm -hmm. we breathe out. It's right. part of the, our exhalation. So the yeast is doing the exact same thing. And it's breathing out carbon dioxide gas right now. And that is the power that's actually going to leaven so our bread. Or the bubbles that make the, the bread. And the gluten fibers the are going mm -hmm. to trap, trap that and allow the bread to, to rise. Okay. So that's, cool. the, that's the process. Okay. Um, you'll notice that I have little cups of our ingredients out here. Mm -hmm. And you've probably seen the celebrity chefs do that on TV. Yes. And there's actually it's all a, neatly chopped for there's them. There's a really, really good reason for that. Because you do it at home as well because... When you get all done, you realize when you're looking, oh, I didn't put the salt in yet. And then you mm -hmm. realize that you need to put that in. If you, yes. <laughs> if you forget an ingredient, and they're mission critical ingredients, the, flour, the, 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 the yeast and the salt, if you forgot either one, uh -huh. you'd end up with pretty inedible bread. Right, right. Obviously, if you Especially forgot the, yeast. If you forgot the <laughs> yeah. yeast, you'd end up with matzah. And if you forgot the salt, you'd end up with bread that just tasted flat. Tasted flat. Okay. Yeah. I have to say, when we met and we talked about, we were preparing for the show, you had said that you do that. So I was practicing doing one of your recipes, and I had measured everything out, like you said, which I normally don't do. And sure enough, I was mixing in the rest of the flour and everything, and there was the cup of yeast. I hadn't added, <laughs> hadn't added the yeast in. So if I hadn't done that, you would have and had I lots. did have time to put the yeast People in. People asked me in but class. But I was like, ah, oh, he was right. 
totally forgot the yeast. <laughs> people in class have occasionally, two, two or three people have asked me if I ever made matzah, and my answer is never intentionally. <laughs> All right, so if you look in okay. here, right now, I don't know if you can capture this on film, but there are, take it back out, unfortunately. there are a lot of bubbles in here. Okay, I'm going to tip this up. For see if you can see them. It's going to be yeah, kind of hard with a serious zoom in. Um, we have what's called foam, and this stage oh, of bread making is often referred to as a sponge. Um, if you look at the old bread books, they would often say, mix the sponge and let it sit on the counter in a warm yes. place. For This is the sponge. So the sponge is before you have all of your flour in it. Correct. Okay. And it actually, it is spongy. It if actually you let it, it's starting look, to look foamy. It looks foamy. like a pancake batter that you've let sit and it starts to kind of Even more so foamy. because mm -hmm. of the yeast yes, activity. Yes, it is so, very foamy actually. So that's, when you say sponge, it's this foamy actually, yeast if, flour if you let it, batter. Sit a little longer, and then you took a scoop, and you scooped it. You would actually see the open pores in the in the batter, okay. and it would look like a sponge as well. Cool. We're not going to wait that long because no. we'll be here till midnight. But right. what we're going to do okay, um, now at what? this point is is bring the mixer back up, and add the rest of our ingredients. Okay. So All right. What else so this is, is going to be a basic four ingredient bread. So right. what we need are the rest. The, we need the rest of the flour. That's we could, good. we could add more sugar to this. Um, we could add some olive oil to this mm -hmm. um, to make it uh, into like a pizza dough or a focaccia dough. Mm -hmm. But we're going to no, keep it simple. We're going to keep it okay. simple um, and just uh, go so this ahead. This is a beginner's class in bread making. This is like Four bread 101, but bread when you get right down to it, uh, we didn't even need the sugar. We could have left that out. That's just giving us a little speed here. Okay. So we're adding a couple of cups of flour, one cup at a time, and we're letting the mixer. Bring these together. Okay. The normal auto lees is 15 to 30 minutes. Okay. So you'd leave it even longer than we Le did. Leave it even longer. Okay. But right. if we left it for the duration of the show, we have nothing to right. show. Right, that would be end, boring. So it would be pretty so boring. Let's keep going. And you don't have to auto lease, right? You the don't have to. It's, it's optional, a, it's but it's optional better step. too. Um, they did determine that it was a very useful step, and it took some time before they figured out actually why. Okay. So in a lot of your recipe, in your recipes, it tells you when to do that. Yes. It says optional, but you recommend if you have the time, you should do Correct. it. Correct. Okay. And even in when we have only a two and a half hour window, we still auto lease for it. a minimum of ten or fifteen okay. minutes. Till it gets that spongy look. To get the right. yeast a head That's start. Great. Because what what's happened is when you're auto leasing, you're at the I ideal temperature of the 105 degrees. Okay. As soon as we added the extra two cups of flour, we've dropped the temperature down. Okay. So, so when the we yeast will slow down a little exactly. Bit. Okay. So when we were before, when we were auto leasing, we were at about 105 when I added the yeast. Okay. If I were to take its temperature now, after we've added two cups of flour, um, we are at 90 degrees. So we've already mm -hmm. lost 15 degrees of temperature just to, the flour. just to that two cups of flour, because okay. you know you've got two cups of flour going in yep. at basically at room temperature to an ingredients right. a stack Against here that's them. at 105 right. and it's got to have some impact on it. So that brought it down quite a bit. Okay. All right. So that's that's the reason why we like to auto lease with without the extra flour because we're at the ideal temperature for the yeast okay. to get going. Okay. All right. So this is still a pretty wet dough. We've got yes, it is. roughly at this point we've got five cups of flour in here. And we're going to take it up by another cup. Okay. Until we start to come away from the bowl. Now, okay. some people... Can we just show how it's still kind of sticky? You think it needs... Is sure. That, are, you, are we going to lose temperature too quickly? Doesn't matter. Okay. No. Um, now let's just show what it looks like real quick. As quick as we can with the... Sure. Drop this down. Yeah. Just so, so this is an example of... It's just, and it's this, just too sticky. This is not a batter any longer, as you can... Right. It's holding together, so I can actually right. grab it's springy, it. Right, stretchy, but sticky. And really art, sticky. an artisan baker would actually work with it at, at this level. Okay. If I was making an artisan bread, I would not add more flour. Okay, an um, artisan bread is like a ciabatta. Like a, like a ciabatta. Okay. I would actually leave it like this. Um, and that's one of the classes yummy. I teach how to handle doughs like this. Because mm -hmm. if you looked at that, you would say immediately, there's no way right. I can what handle the heck, that. What do you do with that? And them? Right. we're just going to add a touch more flour okay. to that. And I'll show you how we so handle it. So for basic it. bread that we're making, that's too sticky. Um, in the, for, the, for most people, mm -hmm. it would be way too sticky. And for I'm beginners, not going to add much more flour, maybe a half a cup. Most people would add considerably more than a half a okay. cup.
Now, so, if you can you add too much? Yes, you certainly can. That's the one thing you can do to wreck bread is add too, too much, much flour. Too much flour. All right, so really try and stick by the recipe. So at this point, whoop, this point you see that we're coming away from the bowl and we're going to Yes, yeah, so it's now it's a I'm big I'm going to cut it off of there so you'll okay, be able to see it. So it's it. a big um, So I'm going to take the beater out and I'm going to use um, what's called a bowl scraper. Okay. You could use a uh, a bench a scraper. Bit no, it's, you can see. I'm just going to cut it okay. off of the beater. There we go. Using the scraper almost as a knife. And we're going to clean this off reasonably clean, but we're not going to go crazy okay. at it because every so little. You can leave a little bit on there. That's all right. It's, yeah. it's not a big deal. Okay. Just trying to get the bulk of it. And this is called a pad. This is a paddle. Not I call it a the paddle. Hook. It's actually, technically, it's the beater versus okay. the dough hook. Okay. Usually, when you buy a KitchenAid mixer or equivalent model mm -hmm. from somewhere, um, um, they come with three attachments. It comes yeah, with the, the beater attachment, it'll come with a dough hook attachment. Okay. And it'll come with the whisk attachment for making okay. things like whipped cream. Um, this you might as well, until you're really an advanced baker, you might as well put it in the Just bottom, put it away. In the back of the bottom <laughs> drawer. Because you'll um, ruin things. Because you'll ruin things with it. All right. I generally do not use that at all. So I still have, as you can see here, what would most people would think is a very sticky dough. Yeah, it's pretty sticky, but it is balling up a bit. And all I'm going to do at this point. Okay. Just take some flour, I'm going to dust the dough, and I'm okay. going to dust my board, and I'm going to use the paddle turned away from the bowl, or okay. towards the bowl, and I'm going to push that flour down underneath okay. the dough ball so that it has a light coating of flour, okay, and then I can dump it, Let's dump it out. So, there we go. Okay. And that's what we've got. So we can just set this aside. Okay, so we're done with the mixer. Done with the mixer. All right. Now we still have dough on the inside that's quite sticky, as mm -hmm. you can see that. Yep. The whole idea is to keep a light coating of flour on the outside while keeping moist dough on the inside. So what I'm doing okay. here... Okay, so, you're, so it's grabbing some of this flour. I'm grabbing very little bit of flour as I come around, and we can move some of this yeah. there we go. out of the way. We're going to talk about the salt in a minute. Okay. but. Uh, what we're doing here is we're kneading upside down. Okay. The traditional method would be to flip and yes, push. Yes, that's how I learned push, how to knead. Flip and push. And when you have a sticky dough, particularly the artisan doughs, um, you'll glue the dough to the counter yes. by pushing it down. Yes. So what we're doing is we're stretching it and folding it on top instead. Okay. We're sort of kneading upside down. All right. It's the best way to describe it. So that you're not smushing into the... Correct. You're smushing into the ball, not into now, the... No, we don't uh, really need to do much in the way of kneading here. All we're trying to do is shape this okay. into a nice ball because the mixer did all the work. Okay, so by mixing it in the mixer... It did all the kneading for okay. us. So we're done. So, so if you look feels... at this and see how it bounces immediately back? That's showing yeah. you that the gluten is fully developed. Can we get a shot of that bouncing here? Is this going to, yeah, see it? It's it just does. like a spring. So that's what, the, it's, you're done kneading when We're it does done. that? Okay. Correct. So if, if it doesn't bounce back, the, you're not done kneading you're, If it doesn't bounce back, you're not done. If it's not smooth, you're not done. So if it still yeah, looks shaggy. because it is shaggy, scary when you feel it, it is smooth. If it's it not looks sticking. shaggy, it's not done yet. And okay. if it doesn't bounce, you're not done. So those are the two indicators. Bouncing and sha not shaggy. Exactly. Smooth and bouncy. And, the, and, the, and for the moms out there right. or the, the dads uh -huh. out there, the indi the, what you're looking for is smooth as a baby's bottom. Okay. So you've got kids, right? You've I been do. There, I know that. I know that baby's that. bottom. So all yes, I'm going to do. do here is give this a quick couple of turns since okay. you were poking at my bread, and we're going to take that okay. and we're going to put it in a container to rise. All right. So, if you were making French bread, mm -hmm. the French believe that any fats whatsoever are contaminants. For okay. making baguettes or their their traditional French boules, mm -hmm. they look at fats as a contaminant. Okay. I'm half Italian. I don't really feel that strongly about fat being a contaminant. So what I'm going to do is to to make this bread release mm -hmm. easier. I'm going to spray the inside of my okay. container with extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And then I'm going to take my dough and pop it in here. And I'm going to give it a couple of swishes around, swishes around okay. so it has a light coating all the way around. 
And then just so we can tell how fast or far it's risen during the show, mm -hmm. I'm going to press it down. Okay. So that we can get an indication on the side that it's rising. Where right. it is. So in we're height. kind of like three quarters of my finger high there. Yeah, well let's set something next to it. It's it's about the same height as the measuring cup. Okay. So we're gonna set that aside and we'll put the measuring cup next to it as we'll a gauge. Okay. And then we'll know roughly what's working. going on. So right. what I normally do at home um, is I'll take a piece of masking tape and I'll put a, like a one inch piece of masking mm -hmm. tape on the container with the center line of the masking tape equivalent to the center of the, right. the dough. So I can, as I'm working in the house or doing other right. things, I can come back and peek and I'll know roughly when it's doubled because I can see that it's rising in something clear. If you rise in something like a bowl you like this, you have no idea. You really don't have any idea. You kind of guess. And I, I do think that's, that's a great idea because I'm like, okay, is this double? Is this, I have no idea. I'm guessing, totally guessing. You sure are. So now, can you over-rise? Um, the first rise um, is called bulk fermentation. And you really can't over-rise. It okay. can easily go to triple in size, okay. and, and you won't okay. wreck it. Right. The chance where you really can do some damage is if, you're, if you over-rise during the, the final proofing okay. stage when it's in the baking, like if it's in a, if it's getting it's, ready to go. It's getting ready to go in the oven. If it over-rises at that point right. and you put it in the oven, what's going to happen is it's going to rise even further because okay. the heat of the oven is going to activate the yeast and to grow. It's going to say grow like huge. crazy. It's going to get huge and then it's going to overstretch the gluten and, and collapse on itself. Ah. So you're going to end up creating a brick. Okay. And I tell so my students. The Tell my students I'm teaching them bread making and not masonry. <laughs> and that we don't, we definitely want to be on the short side of the rise cycle and not the long side. So it's better to be a little under risen than a little bit over risen. Okay, because it'll really wreck it. That'll, okay. It'll certainly wreck it if it over rises in the oven. So let's talk about a couple of your tips. One of the big ones that, that I was, um, that makes a whole bunch of sense now that you've explained it to me is weighing instead of measuring. Sure. I'm going to give you a demonstration. Okay. Um, the traditional way of measuring flour has always been to scoop it and level right. it. Right. You put your. In fact, if you watch Jacques Pepin do any baking whatsoever, his traditional way of, mm -hmm. of, of measuring flour is called the scoop and sweep method. Right. And what I'm going to do is set the digital scale here, and I'm going to tear the digital scale with the measuring cup. Okay. And what that means is. The measuring cup weighs 26 grams, and I'm going to tear it out zero. so that the scale now, the scale now says zero, even okay. with the measuring cup on it. So right now, it's measuring negative 26 mm -hmm. grams. Now, if I took Jacques Papin's mm -hmm. method. Which and is I, my method, too. And I scooped in my flour. I don't know if that's good company or not, but. It's excellent company. <laughs> I've learned a lot by watching. Yeah. He's probably my favorite chef on TV. I don't really get into the competitive the cooking because yeah. I don't learn anything by right. watching it. But when I watch Jacques Papin, even the old stuff, I learn yeah, something learn every something. single time. So, okay. so we've scooped, we've swept. We've swept and measured and we've got 162 grams of flour. Okay. Usually when you do that, you end up somewhere between 150 and 160. Okay, 162. That, that is a roughly a five ounce cup of flour. Okay. In fact, if we switch it, we're at 5.7. All right. So we're going to go back to grams. We're at 152, mm -hmm. 152, 153 grams. Yep. A level cup of flour is 120 grams, so we're 30 grams high. Wow. So if we did that four times, we'd have a whole extra, extra cup of flour cup. in our recipe. Okay. Now, bread recipe, if you did that, would end up with dry bread. A cake recipe, if you did that, would be a disaster. Okay. So, so it's really better. So we're going to show recipes you. recipes have grams. I'm going to show you the correct way to measure the flour. Okay if you don't have a digital scale. Okay. We're going to we're going to loosen up the flour by stirring it. And oddly enough, the flour was actually heavier today than it is most days because we've had a stretch of rain mm, so and the flour the flour has even though it's in a hermetically sealed container, mm -hmm. it seems to have absorbed a little moisture. So I'm going to loosely fill this measuring okay. cup. And then I'm going to level it off the same way. And now we'll see what we have. We have 118 wow, grams. Look at that. So I said it was supposed to be 120. We're within Way. two grams of 120. And if you look, there's a little divot there. If I had yeah. filled the little divot, we'd probably right. be on 120 so grams. So when you're so in your book, you have both the cup method That's and the gram method. A lot of people don't have a digital scale. Right. So my book has, you know, cups, and grams. tablespoons, mm -hmm. 
teaspoons, quarter cups, mm -hmm. all the traditional measures. And it also has a column with all the gram weights. Weighing this is, is a very useful way to eliminate variables. Okay. So Don has this great book available on Amazon.com if you're interested in his recipes, but Don also teaches through West Hartford Leisure Services. Uh, continuing Education. Continuing Education, I'm sorry. West Hartford Continuing Education. We'll have to bleep that. <laughs> um, and you can take learn from beginning to end. Correct. You leave class with baked bread. I teach for West Hartford Continuing Ed. Mm -hmm. Usually bread making on Tuesday nights. Uh -huh. I teach cooking classes for continuing ed on Thursday nights, uh -huh. and these are both at Hall High. Right. But I also teach Monday nights traditionally at Windsor High School, um, Wednesday nights at Farmington High School. Okay. So and I'm all over the, the, the central Connecticut area right. with bread classes, and we run the gambit. This past um, uh, semester, we ran a class called Copycat Breads in West Hartford, which we copied like Pepperidge Farms pep, uh, cinnamon mm -hmm. swirl bread and uh, Thomas's English muffins, right. and then we also ran French breads in West Hartford. Okay. We're going to run French breads in, in, the, in Farmington next year. Okay, great. So, and all that information is on your website. It's on my website, which is atthestove.com. Atthestove.com. Spelled dot out A-T-T-H-E-S-T-O-V-E dot com. com, not the at sign. Okay, and let's quickly check if we've risen in our sure. few minutes. And I'm then just dump we'll this sign out off. And Pop that there, and it looks like we're up about an inch. Yes, we are. Great. And that's only 15 minutes, so yeah. it would typically take about an hour to come up the rest of the okay. way. Okay, great. Thank you so much. We didn't get to quite finish the bread, but we have some samples of some of Don's breads that he did this morning. And that particular recipe is, the, is, the, is the oatmeal bread. And if someone goes to my website, at thestove.com, mm -hmm. and clicks bread and then bread book, they can download a free copy, a sample book, and it has that recipe has in there. Recipe. And that was recipe was in the Hartford Current it's a few in the years Hartford ago. Current. Great. So good luck with your cooking at home. Um, check out Don's website. He has all sorts of great and useful tips. And come take a class. And take a class. You've been watching Life in Style with Sarah. Don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode.